would you like people to take away from this film? Um, I think we would like people to <laughs> uh, ring up their parents and ring up their kids and tell them that they love them. To it and say it. Um, how are you dealing, or have you even begun to deal with that buzz that's out there, that that Oscar buzz? Do you know we only finished the film um, last Monday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's a buzz. So I, I'm I'm a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm just You're still I'm trying, so, to, catch I'm still up trying to work out. Still trying to figure it out. Oh, there's a buzz. There is light there's a buzz. in the day. Yeah. Um, so there's I a loud buzz too. Yeah. Do, do, yeah. do you know about it? Am I the first? I'm really not that aware. He literally of it has not been out of a darkened room. <laughs> I mean, it, it, we're still in a darkened room. Well, we're putting lights on you now. I'm telling I, you, there's a buzz. Looks like either. sunshine to me. <laughs> uh, great. Who knows? I think I think just the desire you just want people to take away from this movie, what you hope is in it, and you hope it says, and you hope it resonates in people. I mean, anything else you can't control, mm. but the sensitivity and the honor that this film deserves is, I think, um, what's really most important. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing it with a you know, in total Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen this final cut, so I'm gonna see it first time in New York with a New York audience, that's the way I wanna see it. Being a mother and, and playing a mother, did it, did it bring anything more to the role? Did you prepare for it? I played mothers often. Um, never any that, that had this depth. None that were this combative and hard and charged and broken um, with their child. Uh, they were always sweet relationships that had some fun struggles, but nothing that was people struggling separately with such grief. Um, I don't think, I mean, you never know, but I don't think I could have done it this way if I had not had Thomas with me. Um, and, you know, of course, I wouldn't have done this film if it hadn't been Stephen that said he was going to do it. But I don't think I could have done and felt safe to go to that place if I wasn't looking at that little face every day. Wow. Yeah. And <clears throat> the, the chemistry between the two of you guys hmm. was, was pretty extraordinary. It's hard because it was a battle. It was a struggle, and so to do that with someone that you love so much and are so fond of by the time you're halfway through this shoot, you, it's a hard, it's where you have to just remove yourself completely and go to that place and not go to hug him, not go to make amends. It's where you stay in that place, and he stayed in that place. That's what made it easier for me. When I saw that he was not moving, I, I had to suck it up and not move either and, and just stay there. And Stephen was real good about it at the beginning, saying, do not go in and try and rectify something. Do not go in and comfort, do not go in and try and, um, you know, change uh, an emotion, which is hard, it's very hard. I played a mother before, but this is the first time playing a mother where you are a mother. Mm -hmm. Now, did you draw upon any of those emotions? And I'm sure it made everything that much richer. I mean, I cry at everything now. It's like I see sparkly lights now and I get, yeah. I, I've become more, um, open to surprises and feelings and, and it, they just take over. I mean, it's embarrassing, but it just, you know, uh, but it's actually really, um, if you let a child into your life and you enjoy every single second, your life will be so much sweeter. Instead of fighting it, just go on their ride and you get a second chance at a childhood and you do things you thought were long past, you know, <laughs> and I, I'm sure it affected me in ways I have no idea how to express. What, what, um, what kind of things have you re-experienced? Or, or... Christmas. Christmas. I'm seeing sparkly lights. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things we have to do and we have to see so we can remember and take a picture. And, oh, my gosh, look at this. And you just, where normally I'd blow past it, just be stressed about, did I get the gifts wrapped? Did I get everything sent out? It, it was perfunctory before, even though it was a very passionate time for me. It's a whole different, it's a whole different time when you do it for the kids. We don't need anything. It's not like we're waiting for something under the tree. Can we talk about Santa? Don't, don't approach, no. <laughs> what is, no. what's going on? I, if I know him, he's gonna say, are you gonna tell him he's real or are you gonna tell him he's fake? Are you gonna, I wasn't gonna, <laughs> are you, gonna, gonna are you doing Santa? <laughs> he's met Santa last year. He's okay. already in with Santa. Okay. He's in with Santa. Because Santa is re very real. Santa's and, totally and real. And if you want Santa to be real, he is as real as we are sitting here today. I, we were totally Say it into the into center. The we totally into Santa. Buy yep. into Santa. Yep. That's Don't. the next movie. Buying into Santa. <laughs> you can't it's a Macy's that. commercial. Yeah, you can't. You can't air that. <laughs> <laughs> Buying into Santa. I mean, are, are you? You have big Christmas plans, holiday plans? Oh, it started do? like last year. Yes. Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> they started about three months ago. Just like planning and getting little things organized. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Wow. It's. Now, 
It's all good. <laughs> what do you say to the, um, I mean, because I've talked to a lot of different New Yorkers about it. Now, what do you say to the New Yorkers who are like, I can't go see a 9-11 mm -hmm. film? Then they shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that uh, whether the people are ready or not, or when they're ready, or how they're going to experience it, people, you know, it's totally subjective. And it'll be the right time for some people, and it'll be entirely the wrong time for other people. And it has to be everybody's personal choice whether to to start hearing those stories and start telling those stories both in cinemas but um, you know in other medium as well and, and some people really can't stand anything about it and some people are ready so it's got to be subjective I think I mean if I can say this I mean I I feel this is the this film is in honor of everyone who lost and was affected this is our, our a love letter to say your grief we want to hear it. It's, you're allowed to speak about it. it. It's not something. It's not something ever to take lightly. When someone speaks of their grief about this event, stop and listen. Listen to it. Take it in. I think as adults, we don't let. Um, we're not comfortable with people's grief. It scares us. But it's so important, and it's it's their right, and it's this is their gift um, to show that no one's ever going to forget. It changed our country and the world as we know it. It'll never be the same because of this event, and I hope it'll never be the same for the better. Um, I think it opened a lot of people's eyes in a way that we'd sort of felt very comfortable. We were sheltering ourselves, and, and um, uh, New Yorkers are amazing. They're amazing people, and the way that they were on that day is something I'll never forget. Never forget. Uh, let's talk about working with Tom. How, how was it working with Tom? Mr. Hank? Mr. Hank. Oh, we love us, Mr. Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hanks. He was fantastic. I mean, he, he fantastic actor, but you know, his role in this is, from the child's point of view, the perfect dad. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't you cast Tom Hanks? Mm -hmm. He is the perfect dad. I wish he was my dad. <laughs> um, but he is. He was extraordinary. Extraordinary with to, with Thomas and yeah, extraordinary and to me. have around. He is. He is the man, because he's such a generous actor. The fo phone call that I take, where I'm in the office, where I, he tells me he's in the tower. He showed up at work that day. Sat himself in the room, like a couple yards away from me. Made that call every. It was him calling every single time. Changed his performance every single time. Would be crying. Would be scared. Would be calm and loving, depending on what he heard my voice doing or not doing. Wow. He would adjust his performance so that I, I got the most out of it. And actors don't have to do that. Normally they don't, but Mr. Tom Hanks does. And before you go, let's just talk about that beautiful baby one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How adorable is he? I know we saw a picture of him in a little pirate outfit. There, so well, the pie where the diaper busted out of it. <laughs> it did. <laughs> they said that Johnny Depp sent him some pirate stuff. I heard that too. Mr. Depp has not sent us it. Maybe it got lost in the mail, but Johnny Depp's got some seriously good hats that Louis would look amazing in. So if Johnny's got them and they got lost in the mail, get me the tracking number. Because I want those hats. I want a Pirates of the Caribbean hat from Johnny Depp. And I heard that uh, George saw little Louis too. Oh, George. Louis gave up George's gig. Did Lou, he? he gave up. I've known George for over 20 years. George makes it 25, but I was like, I was in kindergarten. Then, George, <laughs> and I have known you that long. I've known George before he was Mr. ER. And George loved wow. him some Louis. And he got caught loving on Louis. So all of a sudden I went, ooh, your image has just been shot. Did he get the bug? Does he, George have the baby bug now, maybe? No, he doesn't, but he's got the Louis bug. That's a good He got bug. the Louis bug. He, he loved him some Louis, but he also taught him some good moves on the basketball court. I think Louis learned his dribble from Uncle Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> Not the dribble this way, though they shared that too. But they, they he taught him a nice little dribble. Where was that? In London, in your country. 